The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Hello, everybody. This is a presentation on Snapper Grouper Regulatory Amendment 32. It's an amendment that would revise the accountability measures for Yellowtail Snapper. My name is Myra Brower, I'm Council Staff, and I will walk you through this presentation so you know what's going on. So first of all, this is a scoping uh, document. Scoping is the first stage on the process to amend a fishery management plan after an issue has been identified. So there's two main purposes of scoping. The first one is to inform you, the public, that the council may propose uh, new regulations or change existing ones. And two, to allow you the opportunity to comment on the issue or identify other things that may need the council's attention. So this is where we are in the process um, for this amendment. First off, a little bit of background. Uh, for Yellowtail Snapper, the annual catch limit, or ACL, was first put in place in April of 2012, and it was around 2.6 million pounds at the time. The ACL was then increased to current levels through emergency action back in November of 2012, uh, based on the results of a new stock assessment at that time. And then that change was made permanent through implementation of Regulatory Amendment 15 in 2013. So the numbers you see on your screen is what is currently in place. Um, in 2015, the council started talking about changes to yellowtail management. Uh, there was a, an amendment, Snapper Group of 44, that began um, development. Uh, because, and this was prompted because there had been an in-season closure of the commercial sector in October of that year. Um, then in 2016, the fishing year was changed um, from the calendar year to July through August. And this was done so that if there were to be an in-season closure of the commercial sector, it would coincide with the yellowtail snapper spawning season. Um, and in 2017, there was another in-season closure again at the beginning of June. At this point, the South Atlantic Council was having conversations with the Gulf to try to come up with long-term solutions for um, yellowtail snapper. And then because there have been um, revisions being done to recreational estimates from the Marine Recreational Information Program, the council uh, chose to delay development of Snapper Grouper Amendment 44 and instead focus on this, um, this amendment, which would put in place short-term measures um, for Yellowtail. So here is uh, landings um, for Yellowtail Snapper. You can see we go back through from 2012, which is when the ACL was first put in place. Um, as I said before, in 2016, the fishing year changed. So that's why we have that with a little star on the table. And then following that, the fishing year is now 2016, 2017. We don't have information yet uh, for 2017, 2018. But this table shows you um, the commercial and recreational landings and what percent of the respective annual catch limit was met for each of the years and what percent of the total ACL was harvested. So you can see that in 2014 and again 2016, 2017, those have been um, the highest landings, um, 2.5 and change million pounds for yellowtail. So about 83% of the total ACL was harvested in those years. And here's um, a figure that just shows you, you can see the trend over time. This goes back to 2005. Um, the blue is your commercial landings, your recreational landings are in green. The solid black line represents the total landings and the dashed line is the current commercial ACL. Now that line should probably only go as far back as 2012 because that's when it was put in change, but it sort of helps you compare where the landings have been relative to the current annual catch limit. <clears throat> so why is the council taking action? Um, as I said, overall landings have been below the total ACL and on average, the recreational sector has harvested less than half of its ACL since 2015. Um, the commercial annual catch limit um, also was met in 2015 again in 2016, 2017, and this year there was a closure, another early closure, the fishery closed in on June 6th of this year. And so this triggers in-season closures, which are um, have socioeconomic impacts. In addition, 2017 was a particularly tough year for coastal communities due to the hurricanes. 
And so the council um, saw a need to reduce the possibility of early closures to avoid these negative socioeconomic impacts to coastal communities in Florida. So what are some possible options? Um, option one um, is an in-season closure wouldn't occur for either of the two sectors until the total annual catch limit is met or is projected to be met. So when that happens, both sectors would close. Um, the fishery would uh, close for both sectors, um, regardless of which of the two landed more fish. So under this option, there is a potential for increased landings in one sector to trigger the closure of yellowtail snapper harvest for both sectors. Other options, um, two and three, would result in the commercial sector closing in season if its ACL were met and the total landings, which means commercial and recreational together, were to reach either 80% of the total ACL or 70% of the total ACL. So these two approaches are seeking to make sure that there's a more balanced distribution of the available resource between the two sectors. So in terms of what this would look like, um, so these are predictions based, of course, on current um, fishing rates. So at the very top of the table, you have no action. So if we keep everything as it is, uh, we could see a commercial closure um, as early as the middle of May, and 77% of the entire ACL would be landed. Under option one, which is um, neither one of the sectors would close until the combined ACL was met, that would predict uh, no closure for the commercial sector and 93% of the total ACL would be harvested. Under options two and three, um, there would be closures for the commercial sector. And you can see on your screen under option two, that would happen in about the middle of June. And under option three, which is 70% um, of the combined ACL, the closure would happen for the commercial sector around the middle of May. And none of these options uh, would spell out a closure for the recreational sector since they've been under harvesting their ACL for some time. So that's what um, the council will be discussing at their upcoming September meeting. And if there are any other options the council should consider, uh, please feel free to provide those. This is a slide um, that shows you how to comment. So we have an online form that's available on the public hearings and scoping meetings page on the council's website. You can also send us written comments uh, by 5 p.m. on the 17th of this month. You can address uh, those comments to Greg Wall at the address on your screen. In addition, you can view the presentations and have access to the scoping materials from the same page on the website. We are going to be conducting webinars um, on August the 15th and the 16th, starting at six o'clock. Those webinars do require that you register. And again, the information is on the council's website. Thank you for your attention. <laughs>